Hi everyone, welcome back to Todd Chess Academy. Today we're going to be looking at a game from Vent Larsen. And he's playing against Gligrich. So, Vent Larsen was a Danish chess grandmaster. And he was a very original and creative player. And he was known for his fighting chess with both the white and black pieces. So, here he had white and he was playing against Gligrich. So he opened the game with knight f3, and Gligorich responded with c5. So a typical move of this opening would be to play g3, but instead, Bent Larson plays e4, going for some more dynamic stuff. So d6, d4, open Sicilian. D4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, e6. So this is the Nidorf. And in the Nidorf, there's many variations like bishop e3, bishop g5. The Bent Larson goes for a more positional line with bishop e2. And this is played by many positional players like Anatoly Karpov. So e5 is the move that black plays. Knight b3, bishop e7, castles, castles. So, here, Bet Larson played bishop g5. Already, this is a rare, somewhat rare move. More common moves are like bishop e3, e4, h1, stuff like that. But bishop g5 isn't as common. So, one game with. Petrosian went with bishop e6 and he calmly allowed the knight to come to d5. So this is kind of uh, a little bit uncomfortable. So Gligrich played knight bd7. Now e4, controlling some more space, stopping b5. And now Gligrich plays b6, which is a little bit dubious. So here, bishop c4, and the idea Bent Larson has is to go after this d5 square. So his bishop and knight are both going after the square. This bishop is pressuring the knight, which is controlling d5, and the other knight is going to come from d2 to c4 to e3, and then everything would be controlling d5. And once white gets ultimate control of d5, they'll have a nice game. So bishop b7, queen e2, queen c7, rook f1, rook f c8, and knight d2. Continuing with this plan, and also defending the bishop, h6. Now, taking on f6 is a move that kind of allows white to take the initiative and go after the d5 square with bishop b3, bishop c6, knight c4. Now Gligorit plays a, a sharp move here, so you can pause the video and try to figure out what Gligorit played to try to equalize the position. So here Gligorit played knight takes e4, Knight takes e4 and d5, going for the central fork. Now, Bent Larson played a5, and there's many ideas with this move. But first, we'll look at some of the alternatives. So, knight d3, e4. Black is up a pawn, but after queen h5, the king is not feeling that safe with like queen, knight, and bishop all coming. So there's all this and white could have played knight e3, which would have been fine. Also possible was knight b6, queen b6, and now knight c3, which is not a typical move because usually bishop d5 seems like the move you want to play. But here, bishop takes d5, rook takes d5, and queen takes b2, and a1 rook and c2 pawn are both attacked. 
So black has a very nice position with the B and C files and is just very comfortable. So that was also a move, but also possible was knight C3. And so there were a bunch of moves, but Beth Larson played A5. And there's many ideas of A5. So first of all, if black were to play B5, the knight would come to B6 and fork the rook on E8 and the rook on C8, and white would be winning. If B takes A5, then the knight would take on A5, and after a move like D takes E4, knight takes C6, queen takes C6, and bishop D5. Curing the queen and rook, and getting an easily winning position. So, the only move that was playable was b takes c4, queen takes c4, now white has some pressure on f7, black tries to cover up, a takes b6, queen takes b6, knight d6. Pressuring f7 again, and the threat is to take with the knight, and there'll be all sorts of discoveries and stuff. So here black played a good move and was able to kind of keep his defensive stance. So you can pause the video and try to figure out how Gligorich tried to equalize. So here he played the move Bishop B5, a good resource considering that the knight on d6 is now also pressure so if, if the queen were to move to d5 the rook would move to d8 and the knight on d6 isn't very uh, comfortable and white would just have to take slightly worse end game where black has no problems so bishop b5 was a good move so White had to play knight takes b5 to go for an advantage. a takes b5, queen to d5, attacking the rook on a8, rook takes a1, rook takes a1, and bishop c5. Instead of bishop c5, another move was queen c5, when this endgame would be fine. Queen takes c5, bishop takes c5, rook a5, rook b8, king f1, bishop b7, Bishop d5, b4, king e2, king f8, e4, g6, king d3, rook b8, e4, b6, b3, f5, takes, takes, rook a7, e4, and king c2. So you can see black's moves aren't too hard here. So queen c5, taking on c5 would uh, kind of bail white give black a, a, a fine position. Other moves that white might consider are moves like queen b7 and you can continue with rook a8, c3, queen d2, now threatening queen e1, so g3 has to be played, queen b2, bishop f7, king h8, and queen d5. If bishop e7 were to be played, queen takes f8, bishop takes f8, and queen takes e5. And this is uh, a pawn up for white, and black has to work hard to reach a draw. So white has a comfortable position. Another way white could continue is just queen f3. So chip c5 was already going to be a slight inaccuracy, but. There's nothing wrong with this move uh, immediately, but the intention of bishop f2 is what was a mistake. The bishop takes f2 was actually a, a blunder, and a better move would be to try to go queen c7 and rook f8, king f8, because if the bishop were to take, Queen would take on b5, and white would have an extra pawn. Rook f8, king f8, queen a8, king e7. Now, white has two moves we can look at. One is queen g8, 
and the other is queen e4. So queen g8 attacking f7. Now king f6. Queen e8 b4. G3 bishop d4. Queen f8 bishop c5 and queen a8 b1 continuation. When I still has a little bit of pressure, but black should be holding. So another um, move here instead of g3 would be a bishop takes f7 and the point is that if the queen were to take there's queen c6 check and queen c5 picking up the c5 bishop and white has winning position but instead Black has the defensive resource of queen e7, and now it's just equal. So, seeing that, white might try to do uh, something else. So here, let's say, um, if we played... So here, if black played instead bishop f2 after bishop f7 king f1 or king f2 would be a move but queen c2 and there's some text king f1 and there would be queen e6 and this would just be checkmating so queen f5 and bishop f7 the continuation here with the point being that this bishop will once again drop and this could also be a continuation that white goes for so if queen f5 g6 is another move queen f6 h5 and now you'll see why white has kind of delayed this uh sacrifice king e7 queen g8 Another move was c3, but this doesn't uh, cause black any problem. Queen g8, king f6, queen e8, b4, and now bishop f7. And the point here is that if now queen f7, there's queen c6 again. But if queen e7, now the bishop is just... Uh, able to just take on g6 and now you have a winning position but instead queen d6 is the move to equalize and now black is just fine with bishop f2 and queen d2 perpetuals on the way after white plays like g3 or h4 or h3 so this ending is kind of unclear. Black can also continue with rook a8, queen a8, bishop f8, queen d5, and queen a7, trying for a defense like this. But white will just consistently ignore the queen trade and will be slightly better. So rook a8, bishop takes f2, going back to the game. Now, here, king f1 is an important move because after queen f6, and here white has a good tactical resource, which if you want, you can pause your videos and try to figure out what Bent Larson played. So here, Bent Larson played queen takes f7, queen takes f7, bishop f7, so the rook can't take because the rook is pinned to the king. King takes f7. Rook f8, king f8, and king f2, which is the point of playing king f1 here, just to add in this bishop on f2, so that here, you can see we actually have equal material, but it's clear that white has a more active king and a better pawn structure, as these pawns are kind of just out and can be, uh, pressured and if king e7, king e3, king e6, king e4. So Sigurich tried to complicate the position with b4 
we'll see what would happen if black would just uh, wait around. So the customary way to win is first you block all these pawns, c3, b3, now h4, h5, c4, so he's creating a new, this would be uh, a new passer, king d6, g3 just waiting, g6 and c5, decoying the c-pawn to take on e5 and come in and win the g6 and h5 pawn. That would be the typical way to win. So, Eagerich doesn't want that, so he tries to play b4, c3, b3, c4, c6, g4. So, h5, takes takes h4. Now, king c6, king e5, king c5. Now, here, Bent Larson starts the sequence of moves which gives him the opposition so he plays king f5 now if king c4 king e4 will win as the king will just be pushed to the side and white will win the pawn and going for king b5 is just going to be both, both sides will queen at the same time like this, and it'll just be a draw. So, king e4 would be necessary if king takes e4. So, king d4, trying to not let white get the opposition. With, uh, and coming towards the b3 pawn. So, king f4, king c5, king e4, I mean king e5, king takes e4, king e4, king c5, king d3. And you can see the white king has outflanked the black king and is coming to pick up b3 pawn and b pawn will just be way faster than the h pawn so we can see that the first theme of the game was the control over the d5 square with knight d2 and picking on f6 and we had this 94, 94, d5, trying to equalize, and we have this a5, which is a pretty interesting move, and we see queen c4, f7 was threatened, now there's knight d6, and bishop b5 was a good defensive resource, but black still was under pressure after knight takes b5, a takes b5, queen to d5, rook takes a1 was kind of, uh, required because the rook was attacked and if you were to move then white would just have the whole a file and can just even take this pawn to five and there he goes on so rook a1 rook a1 now bishop c5 already slightly uh incorrect because of rook a1 bishop f2 king f1 Queen f6, now queen takes f7, and transitioning into this endgame where white has the advantage, so he slowly. Now he wastes a move, and he comes back and has the opposition, and can just take the pawn on b3, and white wins. So I hope you like this game. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on my next video. Bye.